All right, trying something new today. So I got the Spark Positive Grid controller. It's a little plasticky. Um, these are you know, your typical metal. Um, I wouldn't say this is super rugged and, um, but anyway, we'll get into that in a little bit. So right here on the front is the power switch and I have the directions right here. I have already done this once, but it was a little confusing. So I decided that I would try to do this with y'all. So the first step here is to press and hold the power button to turn on the spark control. But let's not start there, okay? Let's go ahead and I have my amp over here. Turn on the spark. Then we want to make sure that we connect our spark. Nope, failed to connect. Let's retry here. successfully connected yay all right so now i've got my controller here and what i want to do is that's the little power button it says to hold it down but you don't you just turn it on and looks like i'm already connected and that's not what i wanted to do <laughs> let's see here um if you go down here to the bottom and click that and you go up here, see where it says spark control connected. Let's see if I can disconnect that real quick. If I can figure out how to disconnect it. Well, let's go with forget this device. Okay, understood. All right, so now we're back. So now I'm gonna go up here to Spark Control. It's gonna search for it. Searching, 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 and now I'm connected. So this little blue button, um, it basically um, lights up every three seconds. Beforehand, uh, before I paired it the first time, it was just constantly blinking, which was slightly annoying, but not that bad. So the one thing, well, a bunch of things I noticed was, is, is that these foot switches, you can see, there is no light. There's no indicators to tell you which one is on, which one's off. So um, that doesn't, it's not very helpful. Um, you might be able to tell from your amp um, which <laughs> which channel you're on, but you know maybe in the middle of the show you want to um, change things, go from one amp to another, and I'm getting into um, some settings here in just a second. But anyway, let's go back out to the main screen here on the this now. One of the things I noticed was is when I paired it, you see that little thing right there? Select it. That brings up the hardware presets. So right now, my presets are set. Okay. So I wonder if I flip through this, it'll change anything on the screen. Nope. But I did notice that if you go to here, it's a little hard to do with my big old hands. There you go. You can go hardware presets, stomp box mode, playback control, playback FX control, custom scenario one, two, three. And I wonder if there it goes, it looks like you have four custom scenarios that you can set up. So 
The neat thing is, is like that stomp box mode. That intrigues me because let's say I am um, playing live and originally um, I wouldn't have thought of this as being a live amp, but now that they are um, actually adding the cabinet to it, which is supposed to be like a 150 watt um, flat response cabinet, since they're adding that to this, um, it can be used as a live amp, I would assume. But again, the problem for me with this controller is, is that if I have this on and I'm using it in stomp box mode, say, let's just select stomp box mode, see what happens here. Um, right now it's saying I've got a wah on and off, I've got a drive, a mod, and a reverb. So um, that's pretty cool. But the problem is, is I don't know from this which ones of those are on or off. So let's do a little um, trial. All right, so we got my guitar. Got my channel one on. And this says it's in stomp box mode, so let's give it a try. Not hearing any changes. See, this is supposed to be a drive. Let's go to the drive. I've never messed with this, so <laughs> to bear with me on this. Let's go to the amp. Say okay. Still trying to figure this out. So I'm in got my drive. Got my turn on my reverb. I'm gonna make it really, really big. Can hear this one, but I'm, gonna, but I'm gonna turn it up even. All right, so I'm gonna go back over here to the pedal and let's try one.
preset mode. <clears throat> Just wondering if I have this channel. If I go back to stomp mode, if it changes things here. Doesn't seem like it. reverbs there. I might have to set things up on this Let's see here. Drive. Turn that on. Reverb's definitely on. Delay. Can't remember which Maybe comp law. Comp law on. And then we'll go back over to So it definitely seems like you have to have things set up uh, for the individual amps. But the tricky thing for me is, is figuring out, would I just choose one amp and then run uh, my stomps to add effects to it? Or would I set up each, like um, say I set up the this, Marshall looking amp with four different effects um, or maybe like one just the amp one with reverb one with delay one you know something like that so I have those on my my channels um, anyway it is fun it is neat but I am a little disappointed that it doesn't have an indicator on what what's on and what's off uh, and even the the app itself doesn't really show me what's on and what's off. And maybe there's some more things I can learn. And I'm sure you'll learn too if you buy this thing. Uh, I am really excited about the cabinet. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to buy one yet. Uh, but I would like to try one and see if it's actually something that I would use on a regular basis. Uh, again, I do most of my recordings with uh, amp sims, but I'm thinking about trying to get back to actually miking guitars and stuff. I do have a limitation because I have a family and um, they're here most of the time when I'm I have free time to record, so. Um, I am limited by that. So anyway, uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. I'm learning still about this thing and I did get my, my flying V back and I will do a longer video with that shortly. All right. Take care. God bless. Bye.